Good morning, Blue Water, and happy new year. Happy 2022. I hope that your holiday has been um, relaxing and that you're full of peace and rested and ready for this year ahead of us, whatever it may bring. And I'm so pleased that you've decided to spend this time with us today. And uh, if you're watching the live chat on Sunday morning, then please let us know, say hi. We'd love to uh, interact with you there and welcome you. And if you're new to Blue Water and uh, what we're all about, we are a small church located in King Cardin, Ontario, on the edge of Lake Huron. And um, we have decided to pare down what we do as a church family, instead deciding to do less rather than do more. So our church has online services rather than, um, rather than the life of our church family focusing on the weekly Sunday morning event in a building. We instead watch from our homes, watch from our cars sometimes, and during different times of the week, tune into this online service. And we also meet together throughout the week in smaller groups that we call moorings. And that's where our deeper connections uh, take place. But then as we're able, uh, we also love to gather once a month in person on a Sunday afternoon. So that's in addition to these online services where we gather to worship and to pray and uh, to learn and celebrate together. So we really value those times of connection as well. And then we also have uh, a drop-in that we support drop in at the bridge, the bridge being the ministry space, the building that we rent in downtown King Carden. And the drop in is, uh, it's a community program. It's available for anybody to drop by or open on Mondays for um, just gathering together, making friends. And there's also free lunch and free uh, hot beverages uh, and cold beverages available as well. So that's something that we support and that is a, a really big part of who we are as a church family is wanting to reach out into our local community in really practical ways, um, all in the name of love, the love of Jesus. So that's a little bit about who we are. We are uh, still pretty young, still growing, still figuring things out as I think we all are um, in our lives and really looking forward to what God has in store in this year, 2022. And we are welcoming today a guest speaker. He's a new friend of mine who I met in my seminary program and uh, his name is Cecil, Cecil Ramos. He and his family serve as missionaries in Thailand and so I'm really excited for what he's going to share with us today and next Sunday as well as we hear from him as our guest speaker. And today is really Cecil sharing his story about how he ended up uh, where he is today and I think as he shares his story with us um, honestly and vulnerably I think you're going to be really encouraged. I know I've been encouraged uh, to listen to this message from Cecil and really to see that um, God has created each of us and equipped each of us in unique ways to serve him and whether that's locally or across the country or across the world and God will speak to each of us uniquely um, based on how he's made us and uh, the makeup of our personalities and the timing in our lives and um, all it really takes is just listening and an open posture towards Jesus. And so I think you'll be really encouraged by this message from Cecil and uh, again next Sunday too. And so I want to read a short prayer for us again from one of my favorite prayer books, uh, Centering Prayers, as uh, we open this morning's service. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, living Christ, empty I am filled, heavy I am carried, lost I am guided, imprisoned I am released, angry I am calmed, anxious I am given peace, alone I am visited, 
Hopeless, I am reminded of miracles. Hungry, I am fed. Thirsty, I am quenched. On and on the reversals go. You are the one who turns my water into wine. You touch my life with your word and say, be free, be filled, be light, be found, be peace, be abundance, be love, be joy, be life. Amen. So we're going to watch a short introduction video to Cecil and his ministry in Thailand. Uh, and then I'll come back on screen just before uh, we invite Cecil to properly take over the rest of this service. So we knew missionaries who lived here and who lived and breathed and walked this place ate the food, and they basically reached out for help. They were like, we need more followers of Jesus here. Like, would you specifically come? It took me a whole 30 seconds to make that decision. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm not doing anything else for the rest of my life. Like, that sounds good. I'd say it's challenging because many Thai people, they work really hard, and so they, they work six or seven days a week. 10 to 12 hours a day. I have to go enter their world, go into their shop, go to their market, go to their store, go to their barber shop, and connect with them at their place of business or on their level. And then look for opportunities to kind of invite them into our world and kind of be invited into their world and also have them help us. This is their country and we need a lot of help. You know when Jesus talks about us being brothers and sisters and you know and uncles and grandparents, I, I never truly, I think, understood it to the depth that I do living in Thailand because I experience it here. Like the Thai grandmothers and grandfathers here, they're my, they're my grandfather and grandmothers, right? Aunts and uncles here, they're my aunts and uncles. They are my family and we live like family. In one sense, family is far away in the States in another sense, uh, family is here in Thailand. It's an incredible honor. I feel very thankful and grateful to be here. You know, many people in Thailand work very hard. They desire peace. They, they really want rest for their bodies, but also rest and peace for their souls. And I know that I have never found it anywhere else except for Jesus. And that's something that um, I want to offer to them. I feel very honored that we have many people and groups and churches that are behind us, like a small army of people behind us. And I would say that the, the motivation, the reason why I continue to get out of bed and continue to press forward and put, put one foot in front of the other is so that uh, the people of Thailand would know, love, trust, and follow Jesus. How cool is it that we are part of not just a local body of Christ. I mean, in December through our Advent series, we invited local pastors, local teachers to share with us in our online service and uh, to celebrate the connections that we have between the churches in King Carden. And now we're looking uh, way beyond King Carden to our global church family. Um, and Cecil is part of that family and his church in Thailand. And um, Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, he writes, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together, and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling place in which God lives by his spirit. I love this imagery of being built together, this imagery of unity 
and uh, something that's really been on my mind this week and if you subscribe to Blue Waters emails you uh, will have received an email where I was reflecting on bridge building and how building bridges has been a theme for Blue Water Church for a long time. Um, the name of our physical ministry space downtown is called The Bridge because that's part of our heart is to uh, person to person and relationally uh, between individuals but also communities and other churches to build bridges um, so that the love of Christ can flow back and forth and where maybe there is disconnect or there are gaps or um, misunderstanding or fear, all those things, that we would be the ones who would walk forward in peace and build those bridges and make those connections. And um, the Holy Spirit is building his church together to be this dwelling place of God uh, and that extends globally. And I love how um, Jesus is the first one to refer to God as our Father and to refer to you and I, to refer to his disciples, not just as servants, but as, as brothers and sisters and as children of God. And so we are part of this big family of God and it spans all generations and it spans across all countries, all times and all places. And so that's something that we're leaning into this month and we're celebrating this month. And so I'm so pleased that Cecil has agreed to share with us today. I think you're really going to like him. Um, and be encouraged by this message. So uh, without further ado, uh, Cecil, welcome to the camera. Sawadikab. Hey, Blue Water, it is good to see you. Uh, my name is Cecil uh, Ramos. I am texting you from, I'm not texting you, I'm sending you a message from Thailand. And I just wanna say thank you so much for having me. Pastor uh, Kareem, thank you so much uh, the way Pastor Kareen and I connected is through uh, the, the seminary, kind of the, the Bible college that we're going to uh, together uh, to get our master's, a master's program, FPU. And I've just been so blessed to have her there. We are finishing up our first semester and uh, I could tell you what our class would not be the same um, if she wasn't there. So, so grateful uh, to have her there and just so honored that I could share with you. Uh, you're gonna have to endure two weeks of me uh, Cecil sharing my heart. I want to share a little bit of who I am, uh, kind of a little bit of my story testimony this week. I usually don't share uh, it for that long, but since we have two weeks, I, I figured the first week I just really let you get to know me, and then the, the second week I would like to um, I would like to share a little bit more of our life and ministry here in Thailand, and just share with you the cool things that God is doing. And uh, I would love to come visit you guys as well. Um, over in Ontario, I would I will say that um, you know even though I was uh, born in Los Angeles, grew up, lived, raised in Bakersfield. Um, as an adult, I actually lived in Canada for about a year for training uh, to become global workers, missionaries. My wife and I, but we lived in B in BC, British Columbia. Uh, we lived in Abbotsford uh, for about five months, and then for about seven uh, or so months, we lived in Vancouver. But uh, fun fact, I have been to Ontario. It was a long time ago. I was a little kid, I was like eight years old, and we drove from Bakersfield, California, uh, actually to New Jersey, and then up to Toronto, Canada. And um, even though I was eight years old, I still remember Wonderland. It was a lot of fun. And um, yeah, I just have a lot of good memories uh, uh, being there. So maybe someday, who knows, maybe someday we'll, uh, We'll come back and hang out over there with, with y'all. Uh, so it'll be fantastic. Anyhow, I'm gonna get into a little bit more of, of myself, but um, let's go ahead and just uh, open scripture to, uh, today. I wanna start with some scripture from Luke chapter 10, verses one through four. Um, so if you have your Bibles or your iPads or, or, or um, notebooks or anything, it's Luke chapter 10, verses one through four. So let me go and read that. It says, After the Lord appointed uh, 22 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place he was about to go, he told them, The harvest is plenty, 
but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Go, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. Let's open up with a word of prayer, shall we? Father God, I just thank you so much for this uh, wonderful opportunity to uh, to share, to share a little bit of my story, to share um, of your grace, uh, just pursuing me, loving me. I am so, and uh, I am forever thankful for that. I pray a blessing upon my brothers and sisters uh, there as well, there in Blue Water, uh, there in Ontario, there in, in Canada. Uh, I pray that you would just love on them, minister to them. I pray that there would be some connections made uh, as well, Father, through um, my life, through your story, uh, really, Lord. And I just thank you for the way that you take ordinary people. And uh, it's you who does extraordinary things. And we want to be part of that. We desperately want to be part of something greater than ourselves. Life is short. It's extremely short. Help us to live for you. You and you alone, my Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um... So it was about 17 years ago, and it was December 20, 17 years ago, December, Boxing Day, December 26, 2004, that the tsunami took place and devastated, uh, devastated Thailand. And a few years before that, I uh, decided to give my life to Jesus. He pursued me. And so the tsunami hit, and the next summer, uh, the church that I was fellowshipping at sent, sent teams, they were, they were uh, sending teams and to different places that summer. One of the places was uh, was Thailand to help after the tsunami. And I remember uh, praying to the Lord and just asking, Lord, uh, help me to use me to help you know these people who are hurting. And so I was on that team. Uh, I've never I've never been overseas. Never been on a mission trip. Check that I was overseas, but never on a mission trip. And uh, and so here I am in Thailand. There's a guy, missionary, another Mexican guy named Ricky Sanchez. And uh, we we're hanging out and we were, you know, traveling and going to uh, the south of Thailand and we we're building houses and centers and churches. And, and he says, you know, Cecil, um, in, in Luke, the verse I, I share with you, he said, you know that scripture in Luke where Jesus says the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send workers into the harvest. He said, bro, that is Thailand. He said, uh, it's about 95% uh, Buddhist. He said, it's like half percent Christian. He said, most places that you go, it's like 99.9% .9 Buddhist. Uh, there are many places where there are very, uh, a handful of followers of Jesus. Uh, would you be willing to come, come back, come commit longer? Like we need help. He was basically saying, we need backup, man. Like we need help. And so I remember, yeah, just thinking to myself, yeah, you know what? I could I could offer my life uh, to Christ. I was going to college and I was dating then my girlfriend, now my wife Tracy at that time. And I remember having having the talk when I got back, not exactly the DTR to find the relationship, but rather uh, just uh, a talk with her about what God was doing in my heart. And I said, Tracy, we need to talk. I was on a uh, the phone conversation, and I said, I just feel like the Lord is is leading me towards. Uh, overseas being a global workers a global worker overseas towards towards mission it might be thailand might be another country i'm not sure but um uh, i just want to let you know that we're dating right now but if we continue in our relationship like that's where i'm headed i don't know if you're feeling like moved in that direction but that's where i'm going but if you if you're not if you're feeling like you want to go in a completely different direction and uh you know and maybe we're not meant to be together and uh, maybe you'll we'll want to break up with me and I'll probably cry myself to sleep for a couple nights, but <laughs> I think I might be okay. But uh, she said, you know what, Cecil, I've had the heart to become a uh, global worker, overseas missionary for a uh, really long time. And she said, uh, as long as I'm with you, that's all I need. Just me, you, and Jesus. Like, let's do this. And so, um, um, so there, there, there it was. There we were. Um, no one in my family was a, a pastor or a priest uh, or missionary. Um, yeah, no, no, no clergy in my family. But uh, here I was on this journey uh, towards missions. Let me go ahead and back up a little bit. I want to share a little bit about myself. 
So uh, parents were pretty young when they had me. Uh, in fact, I remember the day that we moved out uh, of the house I was born in Los Angeles. I remember being uh, five years old and, um, and leaving the house. And I remember um, my dad crying and us just packing up a truck and him saying like, just don't leave. Like, please, please don't leave. Five years old, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, dad, it's okay. It's okay. I remember consoling him. But we moved. We moved from Bakersfield, California, from Los Angeles, LA, um, to two and a half hours north uh, to kind of central California, Bakersfield, California. And um, my mom was incredible. I mean, growing up, she was amazing. She worked two jobs, but uh, we barely had enough to make ends meet. Most of my childhood, we were on um, government assistance. Like most Mexican American families, especially in California, uh, grew up Catholic, of course, and uh, did the sacraments and was even altar boy uh, as a kid. Want to be a priest, but um, until I found out that they had to, you know, wear those like long robes and couldn't get married or have kids, I thought, well, maybe, maybe it's not, <laughs> maybe it's not in the cards for me. But um, growing up, my sister and I would visit my dad during uh, during Christmas break, during summer times, and uh, which meant my dad usually when he wasn't living with his girlfriends, who was usually living at my grandparents' uh, house, in which uh, Nickelodeon was kind of our babysitter for the entire entire summer. Um, now, I gotta say that my experience in the Catholic Church wasn't, wasn't bad. I mean, I remember having friends going to catechism classes um, during the week, went faithful uh, on Sundays, in fact. I remember having some actually pretty powerful uh, experiences going to some retreats uh, in high school and the Holy Spirit actually uh, doing some powerful things in my life. Uh, but since my faith wasn't really rooted deep in fellowship and Jesus and the spirit and community, the temptations of high school, I just uh, was, uh, was, was pulled away. And, um, you know, since my, my roots weren't deep, I just fell away deep into sin and uh, just uh, addiction as well. I wasn't honoring God with the way I, I was living or what I was uh, watching or doing. And so I just remember being really empty and, um, and found myself at a, at a Anabaptist church, at an MB church, a Mennonite Brethren church. And uh, I remember showing up to the back of the church and um, I'm running on Mexican time, right? So I'm like 15, 20 minutes late. <laughs> and uh, Latino time. And uh, I went with a buddy of mine and his friend, his, uh, his buddy of mine and his son, who was three years old at the time, his name Ethan, during the worship service, it was powerful. His son comes up to me, like puts his hand on my uh, knees and looks up at me. And I remember looking at him and saying, you're so lucky, you are so lucky because you have a dad who loves you, who cares about you. And, uh, and I, wish, I wish I had that, I wish I had that. You know, right before uh, that time, the, a pastor went up, uh, a pastor that's uh, very well known in the MB, MB world, his name is Ed Boschman. He said, if you've never given your life to Jesus, like come to the front of the altar, like give Jesus your heart, come right here to the front of the altar. And my heart was racing, I'm looking at this, this kid and just being like, Lord, how come you couldn't give me what I desperately wanted growing up my whole life, which was a father who loved me, who cared for me. And uh, I can't say that I hear um, God's voice audible all the time, but I felt like I did that day. And it felt like he spoke to my heart and he said, Cecil, I'm your father and you're my son and I love you, but you are off the path. You don't know where you are or what you're doing. Like. Come give me your life, come to the altar. Uh, I'll show you what it means uh, to become a man of God. I know that's what you desire. I'll give you wisdom and courage and boldness because I know that's what you deeply desire. And so my heart's racing a thousand miles a minute and I walk, I stand up and I walk to the front of the altar. I kind of felt like the whole congregation was gonna come up, but it was just me. <laughs> and, uh, and I felt like Jesus was walking next to me and uh, it was as if he had his arm around me saying, son, you're home, you're finally home. And um, many things, you know, changed uh, from the inside out in my life. Things I used to watch and listen to and do. Now my, my appetite's changed and I felt convicted, I felt guilty, I felt horrible. And um, I gotta say this part about, about, my, uh, about my story uh, because I feel like it's, um, it's just really formative. And uh, it was about forgiving my dad. So growing up, I'd only see my dad uh, 
during those summer times, usually, or during Christmas when my mom would drive me down to LA. But uh, he was, um, uh, during this time, it was uh, June 2002 that I went up and uh, gave my life to, to Jesus now. And I just turned 20 years old. And it was after, you know, I think my um, uh, first year in college. <clears throat> and, uh, and he was actually in prison at that time. And, and I felt like in my heart, the Lord told me to forgive everyone that ever did anything wrong to me. I felt like in my heart, I did that. And I felt like he said, forgive your dad. And uh, I remember thinking like, God, how can he ask me to do such a thing? Do you know what he's done to me? Do you know like how deeply he's hurt me? Do you know like the pain that he's caused me by not being there? You know, uh, I talked to him on the phone maybe once every six months, nine months. I, he wasn't there for me, God. And so I felt like the Lord convicted me and said, Cecil, how much have you uh, hurt me? Like how much have you sinned against me? You've kicked me with your lifestyle, kick dust up at, at my face. And I just stand, stood there, like your whole life just waiting for you, arms wide open. And you can't forgive your dad. What you have, what your dad has done to you is compared to nothing to what you've done to me. And so I just fit, and, and I've forgiven you for all of that. How can you withhold that forgiveness from someone else? So uh, it was like that same, that next weekend that I had the um, weekend off, I decided I was gonna do it. I was gonna go see my dad. He was, um, he was locked up in the penitentiary and I did. And um, it was kind of like a, the movies where, you know, you go through the security systems and then uh, you, uh, you come to a, uh, a place where there's those windows and I could only talk to him through through a phone. And, uh, and um, they called him, I'm a junior, so he's Cecil Ramos Sr. They called him and they said, Cecil Ramos, you got it, you got a visitor. He said, who is it? I said, I don't, I don't know. But he's waiting for you, like window number 13 or something. And he comes up, he comes around the corner, he looks at me. I still remember, orange jumpsuit, took a deep breath. And, uh, and the reason he took a deep breath, because last time we talked, I just unleashed on him. Like all the hurt and anger that I had, I pent up within my soul, within my heart for all those years, I just unleashed on him. I told him off, cussed him out. I just let him have it on the phone. He had a conversation with me. I just, I just unleashed on him, and I wonder, I, I, and I wonder what was going through his mind if he thought, <laughs> as if I'm not low enough. My son's coming to tell me off again. I felt like the Lord told me, just let him be your dad. Don't have a bunch of crazy expectations. Just let him be your dad. And, uh, and so we had a great conversation, and it, and and uh, he wasn't there for for long. A couple months later, he he got out, and I went to go see him, and I actually had a conversation with him where um, I was just hanging out, um, spent the weekend with him, and, uh, and I just opened up and said, Dad, you know what, I was so angry with you. You know, would you forgive me? I was so angry with you in my, in my heart. And uh, I said, uh, I said, yeah, because I wanted you to be there for me, and you weren't, Dad, you weren't. And he said, you know, son, I'm sorry, I was lost. I was lost as well. And he said, you know, when I was in prison, I grew up going to Catholic church my whole life. He says, when I, when I was in prison, it was the first time that I actually read the Bible, took it and read it for myself, and I read it. And I, um, and I just discovered that I was a sinner and I needed to repent and ask Jesus you know, to forgive me of my sin, to be my Lord and Savior and give him my life. He says, son, you know, I did that. And I asked him that he would give my son back to me. And he has. He gave you back to me, son. Um, Dad's not perfect, but uh, the Lord... Has done a restorative work in our, in our relationship. I love I love my father, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that forgiveness that I was able to extend. So um, I want to also say, uh, just share that after following Jesus, uh, some scripture that really was uh, installed in me was just some of the basics of the Christian life, which is um, that Jesus calls us to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit teaching them to obey all that I have taught you, and I'm with you to the ends of the age, Jesus tells us. And you can't have the great commission, actually, with, without the great commandment. The great uh, commission expresses itself in the great commandment. Friends, these are the ABCs, the basics of the Christian faith. And the uh, great commission uh, goes on to say, um, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it to love your neighbor as yourself. 
friends, you know, it's been, uh, it's been just shy of 20 years since I've, since Jesus brought me back to himself. Uh, I remember several times asking the Lord for a heart for my neighbor, those whom he loves, those who are part of the family of God, and those who are far off the lost, just as I was. Um, I consider them to uh, be not yet followers of Jesus, is what we call them here in Thailand. Those first several years were very formative uh, for me in my early 20s and my identity of discovering who I was. Um, for the first 20 years of my life, I felt like I had to live up to the expectations of others and uh, for their approval. And it was those first years of uh, my life in my 20s that, that Jesus was really revealing who I was to him and in him that in him I was pure, I was blameless, that my worth was not in what I could do or how others saw me, but rather that Jesus loved me just the way I was. And this is that powerful love that transformed me from the inside out. The Apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is new creation. The old has passed away, all things are new. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says, that therefore I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ that lives within me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live dedicated to the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Ezekiel uh, chapter 36, verse 26 says, I will give you a new heart, put a new spirit within you. I will take out your heart of flesh. No, I will take out your heart of stone. I will give you a heart of flesh. N.T. Wright, one of my favorite authors, uh, probably of all time, says that Jesus Jesus teaches us a new way to be human. And I think for, for me, um, this first session, my purpose is to uh, just share a little bit of my testimony in order to kind of demystify like what a global worker is or, um, uh, or a mi missionary, because I think a lot of times we have this idea that it's uh, someone who is a theologian or biblical scholar, they have their life all together, or you know, they come from a certain pedigree. Um, really the only difference between me and you is, uh, is, is my country code. That and the fact that maybe around Christmas time, my mom makes uh, tamales. And I don't know, maybe yours does as well, maybe your grandma does. Uh, if, if they do, please send some to me because uh, we don't have any of that masa over here and I'm really missing me some tamales. But, um, with that said, I just want to say that the um, Lord has guided me, guided my family in Thailand. From my wounds, from my childhood, and my insecurities and fear in my soul, He has given me a new hope, a new purpose, and ushered me into a new kingdom where I have the amazing privilege of being a co-worker uh, with and for the King of Kings. I think fact of the matter is that, um, that w with this journey that we've been on, um, I think it's, it's important to recognize that none of us have arrived, that we all have certain insecurities and struggles. For me, it was, uh, as I just shared, it was me growing up uh, without a father. It was me uh, not, knowing, uh, not knowing what it meant uh, to be uh, a man of God, what it meant to be uh, a man who was responsible, what it meant to be uh, a husband, or now a father. Since we've been here in Thailand for eight years, my wife Tracy and her two boys, they're 12 and a half and 10 and a half. They're born on the same birthday, exactly two years apart. And uh, I am a Mexican uh, Mennonite missionary. So, you know, uh, one birthday, you know what I mean? Uh, one, one cake, you know, one pizza, two boys, praise the Lord. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 a good, it's a good thing. I just want to share also, because uh, next week I want to share more of our ministry uh, in Thailand and what God's doing. And, and uh, I just want to say that, you know, for the past, about this summer will be 20 years. In the past 20 years, uh, my journey of, of serving, you know, the family of God, of reaching out and loving the lost, I really feel like the Lord has given me uh, a heart to serve others. Um, you know, with, with the scripture of identity that I shared with you about the old passing away, that uh, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives, you know, within me, uh, him taking out a heart of stone and giving us a heart of flesh 
I believe that he has done that for me. I believe that when I walked up to the, you know, front of the altar, you know, about 20 years ago, I prayed. I felt so insecure. I felt less than, not valuable, uh, not good enough. Um, but I just, uh, I just really, I just really feel like he has transformed me from the inside out. And I want to pass on that same hope to other, to, uh, other families. And there's been several wounds. And I just want to talk about that just for a moment, if I could. Um, I'm not sure where you at, where you, where you are with the church. I think personally, past 20 years, it's been a journey for me of many beautiful things that I've experienced uh, through the church, Big C Church. But also, I think um, there's many frustrating things when I look, especially at the uh, at the American church. That's my context, American church, the American church, um, and where I live in Kern County, especially. There are many things that I see that the American church has, has um, uh, really just compromised in so many ways. And I think you've, you've been able to see it, I'm sure, especially the past five years with uh, just politics and, um, you know, the MAGA movement and all that. And and, um, and and I think for me personally, I felt like there was a lot of times where I had to take a stand against like this wave, um, this wave of nationalism and a high priority in, in like safety, security, convenience, your personal rights, uh, where I feel like in many ways we've, we've missed the mark of what Jesus is calling us to and those two things, making disciples and loving uh, loving our, our God with all that we have, which is basically to love our neighbor as herself, the, the basics, the essential of the, of the Christian faith. And uh, for taking a stand and, and speaking out, um, my, my wife and I, we we had uh, our home church, that church that I told you, that I walked up to the, to the front of the altar uh, almost 20 years now. That uh, for me, it was like family. It's where I learned uh, so much of uh, the Christian faith, the Christian essentials. Uh, many brothers you know, said they, they loved me and, I, and I, they discipled me and I learned and I grew and they commissioned us and they sent us out and, and supported us and we're a home church. And... Um, yeah, during COVID, when we were back, me taking a stand, especially on social media, and just being really honest about uh, my feelings and feeling that I've I seen just um, things that are idolatrous in the in the um, uh, the American church, um, and that cost me, and that cost me the the relationship with that church. They basically um, yeah, disowned us and and uh, came to Thailand, not having that as our home church, but had to have another one. And many relationships of people were, I felt like we were friends and I feel afterwards very much betrayed by them and uh, that they didn't want to um, have anything to do with me. We've been friends for 20 years, couldn't understand it. So I think as far as the institutional church is concerned, yeah, are there, are there wounds? Absolutely. Uh, for me as well, especially still struggle with that. But what I also know is the Church of Jesus Christ is a family and it's the only one we got. It's the only one we got. And um, I just want to encourage you, friends, that there's always a risk to kind of step in to trust someone with your heart. We're, I could share, you know, next week of some of the heartache that we're experiencing here at our church. And our church here is, I think, very similar to yours. It's not, it's not huge. It's not big. We're not all flashy. In fact, we, we are gathering in homes. There's about 20 of us. And, um, uh, and yet there's still, you know, there's disappointment. There's still um, some... Uh, some betrayal there. There's still, uh, you know, brothers and sisters who are stumbling. Some are um, immature in their faith. Some you would think they would be mature, especially as leaders, but uh, have, have let us down as well. But at the end of the day, what I know is that God uses us in perfect vessels, and we're never meant to do this on our own. We're never meant to go on this journey uh, by yourself. And so I just want to encourage you with that to continue to press into Jesus, continue to press into community, continue to press into the family of God. Uh, I love what you guys are doing. I've been doing a little research as well with um, kind of drop-in center with uh, uh, the bridge uh, there with the fact that you guys aren't uh, as focused so much on like the big show production on Sundays, uh, but rather you guys are, you know, doing this, uh, doing this online on Sundays, but trying to gather, you know, during, during the week and, um, and with those wounds in our heart, I think a lot of times we're gun shy to trust others. 
uh, with uh, getting to know us and with um, serving and helping out. But I think as we take those steps, there's healing involved. And so I'm excited. I'm excited. One day I really want to come see you guys. Uh, you're going to see me again uh, next week. But I just want to share that uh, the story isn't over, ne- uh, over yet about our journey here to Thailand and what we've been up to this path, these past eight years. And I'm just so, yeah, I'm so thankful uh, for you. I really pray that we would meet each other. I would love to just, just encourage you. I would love to be able to pray for you, to pray over you. Uh, I'd love to hear your story as well and see what, uh, what Jesus is doing uh, in and through you. And I'm very thankful. I'm thankful for the leadership there, uh, Blue Water. I'm thankful for Pastor Corinne as she is a, uh, um, yeah, she's uh, a leader who just desperately uh, loves you guys so much. And uh, she's just so proud of, of the amazing things that you guys are doing. Uh, and so am I. So am I. So let's lift each other up because I think we need each other. I certainly need you and you guys, uh, uh, and you guys need, uh, need us, right? Need us as a family. So I love to pray and uh, look forward to uh, just sharing a little bit more of what God is doing here in Thailand, here in Thailand as it is in heaven. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for this time that I had this privilege to just share a little bit of my uh, testimony, Father, to really demystify of what it, what it looks like, the mold, what it looks like to be uh, a global, uh, a global uh, worker. And uh, my friends, they don't have to cross the seas. If you're tugging on some of their hearts, I say yes and amen to help us overseas, Father whether that's coming and visiting and just encouraging the body of Christ over here, bringing a word of encouragement, bringing prayer, bringing love, uh, bringing their own testimony, their own stories, their own uh, stories of, of, um, of victor, uh, victories and, and, and failures and strengths and weaknesses. We here uh, in Southeast Asia, we need to hear it. We need to hear all of it. And, um, and what an honor. Uh, what an honor it is to serve the, the, the church overseas at, at large and that we could be connected here. I could be connected to my brothers and sisters there in, um, there in Ontario, there in Blue Water uh, as well. So I pray that you would just encourage them and uh, I pray that you would bring healing to them as well. Uh, if there's anyone there that has uh, had that just emotional uh, wound, deep wound or trauma or abuse, I pray that you would bring healing to them, Jesus that you have taken out our heart, that sometimes we allow our heart to be hardened as well. And Father, what I know about our identity is um, it's not about what we have done, or it's not what, about what we have said, or it's not what has been said to us or about us or done to us, uh, but rather these things could in fact explain us, but they do not define us. We are defined in who we are in you, who we are in Christ, who Jesus is says that that we are because out of our um, identity will flow our activity when we know who we are when we truly know who we are then we will know what to do and father forgive us forgive me to to think that i could go on this journey by myself that i don't need anyone else that i'm smart enough or i could find the information or the answers um by myself father the, the bible says in proverbs that's foolish and I've been a foolish man too long. I don't want to do that anymore. So again, what a privilege it is to be here with these uh, beautiful people at Blue Water. I pray that you would bring us together somehow, in some way. May I just be a blessing and encouraging to, encouraging, uh, to them. And, uh, and I know them to us as well. So thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this time. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I'm going to say in Thai, thank you very much. Um, Goodbye and God bless you. Kokumak Nakab, Sawade Kapom, Kopja Waipon Nakapom. See you guys later. See you next week. Yeah, I can see you as changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. Evidence is all.
for the Spirit of the Lord is here. so much Cecil and yes Lord would you help us to continue to press into you Jesus and to press into community um, both within our church family and uh, inviting others in and going to meet uh, meet others where they're at in our communities and also be building these connections internationally across 
the globe um, with fellow brothers and sisters who are following after you, Jesus. Um, thank you so much for Cecil and his family and the work that they're doing um, for your kingdom uh, with you, Jesus, in Thailand. And yes, we join in that prayer um, in Thailand as it is in heaven. And Lord, we pray too, would your will be done in King Cardin as it is in heaven. And uh, we just thank you so much uh, for this opportunity and this time. Thank you so much for each person who is watching and listening uh, to this message this week. Um, we just bless you, Lord, and we're amazed by uh, the way you draw us into community um, in so many creative ways, and we just bless you, Lord. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Cecil. We really look forward to hearing part two next week and welcoming you back. And um, yeah, we are praying for you. We're so grateful for you and uh, your ministry in Thailand and that you're willing to encourage us and speak to us here in Canada as well. So I hope that you can all tune in again next Sunday when we hear from Cecil again. And again, Happy New Year, Happy 2022. And uh, just pray that you have a wonderful start to this new year. Peace.